Good afternoon, it's eBird Online and I'm here with the final part of this week's review of Before the 90 Days and this is Season 3, Episode 9, Out of the Blue. And for this final video I'm going to discuss Rebecca and Ziad and Tom and Darcy. So both of these storylines are really juicy this week so I'm going to get straight to it. Suffice to say, please press the subscribe button and don't forget the thumbs up to like my video. First up, Rebecca and Ziad. So we first see them and they're driving along and when I say they're driving along, Rebecca is doing her driving Miss Daisy with Ziad. So whilst dozing and snoozing and chilling out in the passenger seat, Ziad decides to throw his rubbish out of the window. And Rebecca quickly snaps at him that that's disgusting and can you please not do that because in America it's illegal to throw trash out of the car. And I thought at this point she's right to be worried, she needs to protect her own safety. If Ziad's the kind of person that throws trash out of a car, how can Rebecca be safe? And to the VT later Rebecca tells us her goal is to bring Ziad back to the United States but she's still worried about him being a work shy loser and she reminds us that she's been down this path before. She brought her ex over from Morocco and he didn't work, he took advantage of her and he cheated on her but she says she doesn't think that Ziad is anything like her ex and to be quite honest I would agree I don't think he is at all. Her ex was quite decent looking and if the photos are anything to go by he knew what shampoo and conditioner were and yes guys I have got a cold so that's why I sound super bunged up this week. Well actually it's gone this week it kind of was at the end of last week so yeah it's nearly gone. So Rebecca and Ziad have a plan to try and get his sister Waim to give her blessing to their relationship and really their plan to disappear back off to the United States without a backward glance. So Rebecca asks Ziad to meet his sister alone in order to convince her that's quite a good plan. Reminding his sister of what you're like could only possibly work against you Rebecca and they stop outside a row of shops just before Ziad's going to meet his sister and Ziad says to Rebecca he has something to ask her and oh my god he asked to borrow money and so Rebecca brought out all of her money out of her wallet and you can see it's quite a big wedge and Ziad said oh no no not that much I just want like maybe 300 dinar but did you guys notice as soon as he realized that she was okay with 300 dinar he quickly said oh or maybe yeah but yeah maybe 500 dinar 500 dinar is about 200 dollars so what I find quite weird was you wanted at first to borrow maybe 120 dollars and then when you thought she was okay with it you kind of upped it and said well you know what let's round it off let's make it around 200 Ziad let's not round it off let's not make it 200 let's make it nothing you should really go and try and earn your own money and Rebecca tells the VT later not that he's never asked for money oh no that he's never asked for that much money so Rebecca he's asked for money before has he this is then a pattern this is not the first time that he's done it it's quite obviously just rising in amounts she asked him what do you want it for and he said something like a little child that just didn't want to say and as I said last week I think it's for her own engagement ring so Rebecca did what she does best she looked perturbed then she looked angry then she looked fuming and she stalked off muttering under her breath what she didn't do is address it properly with him before she gave him the money what she should have done is said I really can't lend you this amount of money if I don't know what it's for but instead she was weak she gave him the money and then she moans to us all later that he's taking advantage of her yeah he is because you're allowing it she said she's going to keep an eye on him is that in a personal or professional capacity because we've seen what you keeping your eye on people means in a professional capacity it means they get away with blue murder you're rubbish at your job you're the worst private detective I've ever heard of I literally think the pink panther is more adept than you are. Rebecca Scooby-Doo is a better detective than you are. So she's going to be keeping an eye on him. What? And watch him spend your money? That should be fun. But what's even more interesting about this story is when Zaid finally meets up with his sister, he tells her that Rebecca has told him if he ever needs money, he should just ask. So Rebecca, you're setting yourself up as a sugar mama and now the cameras are on you. You don't want anyone to know. You suddenly are trying to pretend that it's all wrong. You're suddenly trying to pretend that this is not what you signed up for and this is not the agreement yeah you know it's wrong but you have fostered this environment and now you expect us all to buy that it's not your fault well we don't so Zaid and Waim go into the market and surprise surprise what are they looking at they're looking at engagement rings just like I said last week Rebecca is purchasing her own engagement ring 
Zied tells us he wants to surprise her. She won't be surprised, Zied. She'll be bloody shocked and appalled. How unromantic. The only person that was surprised was Waim. She does not approve of this relationship and she tells us she's only going to look at engagement rings because he's her only brother. And she's upset that they're not taking their time with this relationship and that everything's going far too quickly. She tells her brother, it's not normal to take money from a woman and how can you travel to America with her and leave mum and dad alone? Zaid said, yeah, yeah, it's difficult but you know and guys I think this whole thing is for the camera I think his sister's quite happy and his parents are quite happy for him to go to America because they know that when he gets there whether he's working or not he'll be sending home money and then he'll be living a better life than they are now and they all also know that this is temporary mm, say about four years so he purchased a ring I didn't really like what he was looking at to be quite honest but I guess you don't get that much for $200 and he goes back to meet Rebecca Rebecca's sitting in the corner like a silky little child smoking cigarettes she looked up from her cigarette and asked him why did you want that money he explains because there's not much money for me here Zaid then get a job any job you've told us that you've worked in cafes you've worked in coffee shops you've worked getting audiences for tv shows why don't you do that again why are you just cavorting round and why have you got no money whatsoever why did you waste money on that god awful t-shirt with the picture of Rebecca's granddaughter on instead of saying saving it towards the engagement ring that you were hoping to buy. The whole thing is just embarrassing. But yet later Zied saw fit to moan to the VT and said, in Rebecca's mind she always thinks that I do something wrong. Zied, that's in Ebird's mind as well. And I think probably lots and lots of people's minds. And he tells us that he hopes what he feels in his gut is real. It certainly is Zied, you've overeaten yet again. And he says he will not marry her if she has no trust in him. Well, she doesn't trust you so I guess the wedding's off. Of course it won't be, because with no wedding comes no green card and really that's all you want Zied. Tricking Rebecca into buying her own engagement ring is the clearest indication of that yet. Rebecca, when will you learn? As if you're going to have a realistic relationship with somebody 20 years younger than you, with somebody that finds it hard to accept that other men may look at you, with somebody whose family doesn't approve of you or your tattoos. This whole relationship is crumbling at the seams. And that's where we leave Rebecca and Zied today. And my final couple for this week, and I guess it's really not a couple it's more of a quartet because it's Tom and Darcy along with Stacy and Florian every time I see Tom I like him less and less so the foursome are all getting ready to go out we're going to the club that's how we do in Albania screeches Stacy I'll take your word for it thanks so Tom Stacy and Florian are all standing at the lift and they're waiting for Darcy who I think is still applying her fake tan and they're saying oh come on Darcy hurry up oh Darcy Darcy just hurry up Stacy was the loudest voice and then Stacy said to Florian really just go and tell her she's just taking so long Stacy Florian really are you the same couple who just a few days ago made Tom and Darcy wait an hour at a restaurant and now Darcy's making you wait three or four minutes it's a massive problem Stacy you're the massive problem and you Tom don't think I've forgotten you and we flick over to the VT and Darcy's saying I'm still thinking about a proposal I'm wondering if there's any way I can pull it back well after tonight's shiz show i can pretty much say no there isn't and i would like to say at this point everyone's saying oh darcy's so needy darcy's so pathetic yes i do understand darcy's shortcomings however let's not forget that tom did say just yesterday i was thinking about proposing to you if we went to grand canaria we know it was a lie but for whatever reason darcy doesn't see through it and darcy believes it to be true and this is why i think darcy's still really hoping that some sort of proposal could be on the cards and also i don't think that Doss is entirely crazy. I believe that in the lead up to this whole show and in their four years of chatting online and so on, I think that Tom has also said these sorts of things to Darcy, intimated that they may get married or intimated that she's the one. And that's why Darcy really believes it so much. When Tom said to Darcy last week, I was thinking of proposing to you, I don't believe it's the first time that he's said that scandalous lie. So all four of them are sitting in the bar and Stacey orders a cucumber martini and she orders the same for Darcy. Oh no, Darcy says she wants something a little bit more sweet and she says, you know, I know what I want. Stacy started repeating, do you Doris? Do you Doris? Really Darcy? Do you? Do you? She's just so annoying. I simply can't bear her. And they start their little tit for tat and back and forth immediately. Then they all take a shot and Stacy turns around to Darcy in front of the two guys and says, you might want to put the girls away there. Referring to her implant, they're on show. She's wearing 
a low cut dress. And I pretty much wager you've both got the same implants, probably at the same time. So stop it, Stacy. It really doesn't become you. Then Stacy's sitting there and she demands, Florian, Florian, come over here. I want my man by me and Darcy, you go over by your man. And then she started kissing him and being really showy. And she said, my man's so handsome. I love my man and I love kissing him. Look at this face. He's a model. And you could tell the way she was doing it. She was, she was doing it and watching Darcy at the same time. So she was more or less saying, I got something good looking and young and you got something a little bit well worn and quite frankly, nowhere near good looking. I only have to wonder what Stacy's going to say when she finds out that Tom's skint as well. She'll have a field day. And with all the little digs and the jibes from Stacy, Tom doesn't back Darcy up at all. And then in earshot of Stacy and Florian, Tom said, why are you looking over there? You're more bothered about them than you are about me. Not really, Tom, but Stacy's virtually talking to Darcy. Stacy then said really loudly, Florian loves me, Darcy. He loves me. He loves me for life. Oh my God, you're jealous, Darcy. You're so jealous. And at this point, just unbelievably, Tom, the little dick, says, Darcy, why are you like that with your sister? Just completely ignoring everything that Stacy is doing and completely ignoring the fact that Stacy and Florian are pretty much laughing at Darcy and saying, oh, she's jealous, she's jealous. Tom, deep this, if she's jealous, what is she jealous of? Because she feels she has a better man than you. She thinks a prepubescent Eastern European model is a better catch than you, Tom. That is what she's saying. Please catch it. Catch her shade for one minute. No, you can't. You're too busy trying to dig out Darcy. Darcy tries to explain to Tom, Tom, it's just tit for tat. And then Darcy said, I have my ideal man here, Stacy, and you're not going to F it up for me. And then Tom went, woo. And at this point, I've got nothing more to say about Tom because I'll just be demonetized. But WTF, honestly, I hate him. This is bullying at its finest. And Darcy tried to say, Tom made a beautiful vacation for me. And Tom snapped, don't bring me into it. She was about to say, you were going to take her on a beautiful vacation. Why are you shouting, don't bring me into it, Tom? He's looking for any and every opportunity now to kick Darcy. Florian drunkenly staggered over and said, you loves you and you love him. And he's so drunk that I'm kind of unsure if this was a dig or not. I mean, he's for sure under Stacy's thumb. Whatever Stacy says, he goes along with. But I guess kids do do what their mum says. And it's just that, an obedient little kid. And whilst Florian's saying, you love him and he loves you, Darcy then said, Darcy's a glutton for punishment because she says, I'm not sure if he loves me. And at this point, Tom said nothing. He could have said, we've only just met each other. I really like her. It's we're working towards that or that's personal between Darcy and I or anything something kind something to allay her fears something to stop these pair of dickheads braying and poking at her but no he just says nothing and then he suddenly screeches why are you being so rude to your sister and it's as if he can't see her sister winding her up and goading her and at this point Darcy's just gone to pieces she's crying she's screeching at her sister and all three of them are sitting around slagging her off Stacy starts saying she's blaming us all now trust and believe Darcy trust and believe just trust he loves you trust and believe and she's laughing and Florian's laughing and they're just giggling at the little sideshow and the gibbering wreck that they've managed to reduce Darcy to wow and then Tom says he's confused he doesn't understand what's happening Tom let me straighten it out for you Darcy and her sister have a toxic relationship they like to one-up each other when you side with Stacy and attack Darcy you make Darcy even more unstable you make Darcy even more irrational and that's what's happening right now everybody's had a little bit to drink and everybody is going in on Darcy now the e-bird can be ruthless at certain times but even I won't kick a dog when it's down I might kick it down but I certainly won't kick it when it's on the ground Tom you're despicable you're vermin you're pretty much the worst person I've ever known you are now as far as i'm concerned a reality tv villain darcy runs off and neither stacy nor tom go after her instead they retreat outside with their drinks and they proceed to slag darcy off stacy says she's just looking for you to compliment her she's still really hurt by her previous relationship and tom said i don't want to suffer for her last failing or the one before i deserve better than that tom you really don't no i'm being really serious now you really don't you deserve angela that's what i'd like for you I'd like Angela for you. And Tom, what is a relationship? We all help out our friends and partners working through their previous difficult relationships and the baggage that we carry from that. And unless you manage to meet your partner,
partner, when you're 16 and still at school, you will always have the baggage of a previous relationship to deal with. If you don't want to deal with this sort of thing, you're very probably not ready for a relationship. Or you're Hugh Hefner. And last time I looked, that old goat was dead. So Florian goes to find Darcy and Florian by this point is really drunk. And he makes Darcy sit down and they all sit at the table outside. And then the full on bullying continues and it's really uncomfortable to watch. They're all sitting talking to Darcy and they're all saying, what's the matter Darcy? I don't understand. Lighten up. You're ruining your relationship Darcy, says Stacy. And she's grinning and laughing and really enjoying the moment. She's loving this one. And it does make me wonder what's happened in their relationship, Darcy and Stacy, to make it so nasty. Usually twins will argue amongst themselves or sisters or siblings, but when it comes to allowing third parties to go in on their loved one, no, it's not happening. But Stacy just really doesn't seem to care. And then Stacy starts saying, she doesn't think that you love her. You're here with your man. I'm here with my model. You look like you're about to cry. Cheer up, Darcy. What's wrong, Darcy? Goading and prodding still. And Tom asks her, what makes you think that I don't love you? And it's at times like this when I wonder what the voices in Darcy's head are saying. Because she starts saying, Stacy, stop making me look needy. And her tears are now in full flow. She's just really sobbing and crying and she's virtually got a snotty nose. It really is a sh show. And it's at times like this when I wonder, what are the voices in Darcy's head saying? It beggars belief. Because Darcy then says, I just think I'm not good enough for you. I get mixed signals from you. And she's looking pleadingly at Tom. And he then says, this is a projection from yourself to me. And honestly, I thought about that for ages. This is a projection from yourself to me. If anybody knows what that means, I beg you put it down into the comments below because I cannot for the life of me understand what he's talking about. For some bizarre reason, she loves Tom, so I don't know why it's a projection. Literally, I don't get it. And she does get mixed signals from Tom. Let's survey the facts. Tom's invited her over to London for two weeks. He's put her into a really nice Airbnb. He's taken her for nice meals. He claims to have planned a romantic getaway in Gran Canaria. He also says he was on the verge of asking her to marry him. He's gone house hunting and shown Darcy round a dream home and he's also pondered and spoken with her and said if this does go further we've got to think about if we're going to live in the UK or if we're going to live in the US but on the other hand he's got his ex-boyfriend to sit and slag her off with her friend in a bar. He's teamed up with Stacy and Florian to belittle Darcy at every point. When Darcy's in full flow of tears and really crying Tom does nothing to put his arm around her to allay her fears at all. If anyone asks how the relationship's going he rolls his eyes and just last week he told her you're the kind of girl I can friend zone so Tim yes you are blowing hot and cold for what it's worth I don't think that you like her at all I think that you realize yes she is a basket case we know this but just tell her she's a basket case and have her be on her way don't drag this out and make it as horrible for her as you can but all the way through this horrible conversation Stacy is still laughing and giggling into her drink and Tom then says I won't get down on my knees to you that's not gonna happen and he tells us he's not here to appease her because she's seeking approval Tom, all women do that. This is what convinces me that you've never had a girlfriend. All women at some point say, do you love me? All women at some point say, do I look okay in what I'm wearing? That is what women do. That is one of our main functions on planet Earth. To give birth, to nurture, and to ask our partners if we look fat in what we're wearing or if they still love us. That is what we do. That is a woman, Tom. That is a woman. You've never laid hands on one before, have you? And that's pretty much where this really uneasy episode ends. Some girls like looks. Stacy. Some girls like money. Jennifer. Tom has neither Darcy. Whenever I'm looking at Tom on my screen, I feel violated. Darcy and Stacy should have banded together to see what they could actually find out about Tom's Tom's feelings for Darcy. However, they're too busy forcing themselves into far too tight outfits and bickering with each other to bother. It's an opportunity missed. And that is everything from me this week. But I will be back tomorrow with my special. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Guys, let me know what you think about these three bullying Darcy. And is Rebecca the architect of her own misfortune? I think she is. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And also don't forget to press the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my videos for the rest of the week. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.